our new captain, Jason. I should read that instead. You see what it looks like? The hairness, right? So that's why it was good. So here's the captain, the new captain. Uh, good evening, everybody. <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. I am the new captain of Tenwood Station. It's my second day on the job. Um, I have 22 years in the San Francisco Police Department. Uh, I've worked in seven of the ten district stations. I've done undercover operations. I spent seven years uh, investigating robberies, uh, you know, pickpockets to take over robberies, kidnappings, traveled all over the country, uh, picking up suspects, flying them on planes, bringing them back to San Francisco. Uh, I went to public school here in San Francisco. Uh, I went to graduate from San Francisco State. Um, licensed to be an airline mechanic, decided to go into uh, law enforcement instead. Uh, I'm raising my kids here and um, I'm from the west end of the city. I do believe in community policing. Somebody in here mentioned community policing in here. And uh, a lot of people really, I, I guess there's maybe 20 people in the room now. And if you ask 20 people here, they probably have 20 different definitions of community policing. Um, community policing, we used to define it as things like you get an officer on the beat, get to know your merchants, get to know the residents, and be accessible. Well, those are comp components of community policing, however, that is not community policing. I can put a guy on a beat all the time, however, if he's not engaging in, um, in true partnerships based on trust, well, we don't really have community policing. I believe that enforcement, in the 22 years I've been in the police department, or almost 22 years, I've kind of come to realize that enforcement alone is completely and totally inefficient, uh, ineffective. It's, uh, it's inefficient. If it's done alone, it's going to be ineffective. It's, it's putting a Band-Aid on, on a, uh, kind of an open wound uh, that's going to continue bleeding. <clears throat> that's why these partnerships are so important. The Tenderloin is a great example of an issue that everybody thinks is a police issue. There are no police, police issues in, in the Tenderloin. There are only social issues. And uh, while the police can take a, play a role in some of those issues and solving some of those problems, without those partnerships, we won't ever have a sustaining uh, solution to any of those issues. Um, I, I've really tried to spend as much time as I can out in the community the last few days, and I'm just reminded of how, you know, I'm, getting, I'm continually getting these phone calls. Well, you know, please take a bite of my problem. Please take a bite of my problem. No problem. I can throw resources at that. I'll continuously adjust my chess pieces, you know, as long as you want me to do that. But until we form a partnership, until the community is ready to get really involved and look at this from 360 degrees and consider prevention, some intervention strategies, anti-recidivism, you know, and, and this is a great example of, we have some stakeholders here in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the room, and you think about some of the people that have already come up to speak. Really think about what it is that they're trying to do and how it's going to affect the community. I mean, it's, these, are, these are some really important issues. And you know, this is the time to start forming those partnerships and to making informed decisions about what you want to see in your community. Um, I'm, I'm trying to just take a step back and, and, and take it all in. And, um, you know, some, some uh, I, I have uh, my colleague here. We have about the same amount of time in, in the police department. We've done a lot of the same things. And, um, you know, I'm trying to take it slow, but, but I'll, I'll share with you that I really believe in problem solving. And what that means is that I'll, I'll share with you my definition of community policing. It really is just a partnership between the community and law enforcement to uh, engage in uh, um, dealing with crime and disorder in communities. Uh, that's, that's my definition of community policing. It's all, it also happens to be uh, the Department of Justice's uh, definition of community policing. A strategy in community policing is problem solving. Problem, sol pro problem solving uh, goes towards things that are uh, crime related that require a police response and then getting the community involved and then attacking it from, you know, with a certain set of strategies like uh, a format where we scan, an uh, analyze, we then set up a response with stakeholders in the community and some of that may include enforcement, but other things like, you know, code abatement, um, education, signage, uh, environmental assessment, um, the architect or engineer, I'm sorry, uh, architect, uh, mentioned uh, the, the, the kind of the tug of war in regards to the, the, the trees. Um, you know, even our rookies know that you know, the, the more light on a problem, the less opportunity there is for opportunists to get in there and commit a crime. However, as a property owner, I also know that if I put a tree in front of my house, my house value goes up 10%. 
so you know we have, we have a little bit of push pull there, and uh, you know we really have to balance that. I had a complaint this afternoon from a hotel owner that said, you know, um, he, he actually came out to see me, and, and uh, I won't, so we were talking. I said, well, why don't we just walk over there? So you know, I went over there and I looked at his property, and I said, you know. Uh, yeah, the problem that we have here is that it's in the middle of the tunnel. Okay, that's one issue. So we need to manage our expectations. But if you put some lights up here, if you if you if you create a situation where people can't sit on this ledge, they won't sit here. This graffiti. If you deal with that graffiti, um, then the people who tag here will know that I can only fly my tag for maybe two hours before they paint over it. So painting over graffiti is you know it's 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 key, and that's why. Uh, you know, I really have to give um, <clears throat> that 311 system. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, you know, as a citizen in San Francisco, that I can call in a 311 complaint and somebody will come out and deal with that and make the re a resident paint over a, a, a tag. I think it's wonderful. Um, so those are some of the things. If, if, uh, if you choose to work with me, uh, these are some of the philosophies that I have and the way that I like to attack uh, problems. And I, and I have some inspired um, people on my management team. I have five lieutenants. Uh, Lieutenant Jim Marino is one of them. He'll, he'll, uh, he's, attending me, he's attending the meeting with me tonight. Um, and what I will be doing is, as I receive these problems, be forming uh, problem-solving programs through the lieutenants, and then they will get not only the officers involved, but try and get the community involved. And it's really uh, going to be up to the community to determine how um, how galvanized a uh, a solution uh, will take place with the program, because the police will do their their part. They will enforce crime. They'll, they'll enforce crime, enforce laws, um, battle crime. But uh, that partnership, they'll go out there and try it. But they can only go so far, sir. I'm gonna throw it back. Oh, the guys from 101 Height still here. What are your plans, if any? Eddie High, Turk High, Golden Gate High. I've been here 16, almost 17 years the same thing. It, yeah, a little less, I mean, because it used to be like up by Eddie and right. Park in there, and, you know, so it's kind of, you know, been brought back a little bit, but it's really disturbing when I go through, like, you know, I drive through down the Hyde Street to, like, get over to Soma, and you end up stopping at a light. It'd be nice if it was just a green wave all the way through, but I know that that people are going too fast, and they're probably not <laughs> yeah. We've actually yeah. been pretty, pretty fortunate in the tunnel. We don't have much, we don't have many cars running into each other. Or uh, running into people, which is good. That, well, that's yeah, that's probably a positive. Yeah. But you get stopped at a light, and you got some young man on the corner opens his mouth and shows you a bag of pills in his mouth. You know, I mean, are you gonna do anything? I am about I'm it. I mean, I'm going to go like to the community, and we're gonna form a partnership and try and come up with some long-term solutions to it. And in right. regards to short-term solutions. I'm certainly going to send my officers out to deal with that problem, just as every captain before me has. And I've watched, I've watched some of those tactics, and I gotta say, I would love to video it because it's one of the most amusing things you've ever seen in your life. Just pull off to the side and watch, and the police will come through, and these guys literally will like disappear, and then about 20 minutes later or whatever it is, they come back and they're up another block. It's true. It's, it's true. It's the most amazing thing. I, you know, I don't want to frustrate. I want what I'd like to do is on some of these issues, you know, instead of, not instead of, in, in addition to having the officers run that amusing gamut for you, and, and, but I would like to actually come up with a very real system to fix it. to fix some of these things. And I can't say that. You know, we are going to improve public safety in the Tenderloin. It's coming anyway, whether I'm here or not. Oh, the money is coming in, and it's going to, you know, it's not going to just turn around overnight, but I've already seen an improvement in the Tenderloin in the last 20 years I've been working in and out of this district. I mean, you've seen it too. Despite the fact that we have the largest number of parolees in a geographic area in California, you know, probably the most SROs in one area that, you know, that, that I can think of. And, you know, when you have that, you know, I mean, yeah. we have social, we have social issues. Right? Yeah. There's some challenges, and and uh, you know, when when you know, when our good architect here, the questions that were about what kind of what kind of design are we going to have? Right. Are we going to have a design that's going to be bringing in the type of people who are going to be standing on that corner, or are we going to have some families coming into this area? Those are some good questions. Um, so, and, you know, so so I, you know, I, I would hope that that would be something that would be brought back to the person funding this project. 
And I just kind of want to add on to that, just like in your defense. I mean, I, I realize the problem is. Well, I mean, and it needs not, to be yeah, addressed. I, but, I don't think he just, here. But he, he <laughs> just started, and he, he barely found the pencils, I'm sure. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> No, no, I, brilliant. I, I have a lot of time in. You know, I, I've been doing this a while. If you have questions, tough or, or easy, just throw them, please. Fastballs, I can yeah. take it. You know, Captain, um, one thing that, because I've been living the Tenderloin for a very long time, and I've, I've went through my heydays of, you know, getting in trouble and stuff like that, but that's not what I'm saying. But uh, the thing is, what I try to do, especially in my block, I live at 124 Turf, and what I do, I go out and actually do my block and then we'll be in it because as soon as I see it, I spray it or either I paint it. They, they supply me the paint, they supply me the brushes, they supply me the rollers. Um, I even go in that unit block of, uh, of uh, turf and I go down there and do graffiti removal and, and stuff like that and I go around on Mason. You may see me everywhere just walking around sometimes 10 o'clock at night because because it makes me feel good, at least me giving back to San Francisco uh, by removing graffiti. You know, and I'm getting ready to go back to work soon. So, um, I'm, and I try to be out there different times of the day and different times, you, you know, um, as late as night as I mean, you know, as I choose to go out, just to let people know by wearing my vest that it says volunteer graffiti removal. So maybe um, we as a community can come together and as long as we make a, a, a presence on whatever block it is that's giving you a problem, a presence now, you got to come out to your house and actually if you don't like a store sometimes, just go walk down that street and go in some of these stores and start uh, uh, giving them business and then the, then the community can start seeing and then you can start filtering out some of that stuff. But that's just my way. Well, I, I think you have a, you know, first of all, I want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's very few people in the community that actually <coughs> take such a stake in it, but they'll get mm -hmm. up in the middle of the night and go out and paint over graffiti. So mm -hmm. I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I went to public school. I ran into a guy at, uh, at a treatment facility just yesterday. I just walked in there and played high school football with him. And, uh, you know, it's it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of touching to be in this neighborhood and have been around so long that I run into somebody like that 20 some odd years later. And, just, but anyway, I thank you. And the, the thing you said about these businesses, um, I ran into one of the cops came in. And he's, he's holding the Starbucks coffee, and I said, "Why would you go to Starbucks when we have all these small businesses? Starbucks mm -hmm. over here in the town, we could do this." Well, I got a gift card. You know, I got a gift card, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I will go to uh, you know some of these small businesses. We want to, you know, and I think that you're conscious, you know, being conscious of, of these merchants. You know, you're onto something now. You know, some of these best practices done in some of these other urban environments will go back to graffiti. You know, a, 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 an organization like this, a really socially conscious organization like this, you know, you guys have a pretty powerful voice. You're writing letters for people. You know, if you were to give your stamp of approval or disapproval on a merchant, you know, that might say something, right? That, you know, we could, you know, you guys might be able to do something with that. And I'd be happy to work with you on that stuff, um, you know. Yeah, because there are certainly merchants in this neighborhood who aren't doing anybody any good. That's true. Right? That's true. Uh, but 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 when you say what are you going to do about Hyde and, and uh, Hyde and, and Golden Gate, um, I'm going to uh, sit back and watch for a little while. I'm going to take it in, and I'm going to find out. I'm going to talk to everybody, find out what their issues are. I want to find out what's been done. Right? I don't I don't want to go over the same territory twice if it didn't work. Yeah, there was just something done like three or four months ago. Enforcement? Like, yeah, it was like an in, enforcement effort or something like that. But It's it, back. Is yeah. it? Enforcement alone is not going to work. Yeah. Got, we need to do more. I, I had this woman here with her hand up for a long time. Yeah, I have, I have two questions for you. One is, uh, and I know it's day two on the job, but um, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about the Leavenworth Corridor effort? And secondly... Can I have your name, ma'am? Sure. It's Diana Keelander, and I live up on the 600 block of O'Farrell. Okay, now, oh, okay, so it's block of O'Farrell, so that's Hyde and... It's between Hyde and Lovemore. I got it. Yeah. And then the second thing is, I know we're, we're sort of on the border line between districts, and so um, I, I'd like to understand if you've thought about how to better police the edges of uh, this district, um, because what, what we have seen happen, particularly in the last...
last few months is as displacement is happening from other parts of the Tenderloin, it starts to move into the border areas where the police don't, uh, aren't able to, I guess, to spend as much time. It's an astute observation, and uh, it is happening, displacement. Um, while I was on the, um, uh, while the representative from BevMo was talking, I was actually uh, texting the captain of Northern Station, letting him know that a, the business in his district is actually looking to uh, move into the adjacent spot. Because we are we're actually talking about three different districts here. Um, SWIG is actually located in the Central District, and uh, while it's in District 6, the policing district is actually the Central District. So I'll be contacting the captain at Central, and uh, you're also in, I think, with you on O'Farrell, so you're, you're actually in our district. Uh, Leavenworth, there is a group uh, right now um, that, is, that was working with Captain Garrity, he's now a commander, and uh, they formed a group called the Anti-Violence Working Group, and I will be meeting with them, uh, two of the members of that uh, group on Thursday, and their focus is on, the, um, is on, is on Leavenworth um, from uh, Eddie or Turk up to O'Farrell. So I'll be talking to them about some of the issues, and in regards to what my plan is, um, I'm not, I don't have a plan. Um, I have lots of experience and I have lots of plans, but I'm not going to apply a plan until I know, really know the problem, what's been done. And I, I just don't, I just, I'm not going to just throw resources at something unless that's what you want. But I will, you know, I'll manage your expectations by telling you I'm going to do this, but, uh, you know, without, without something else, it's going to come back, particularly in the tenor one. Uh, one of the things that the merchants and residents should be thinking about is working with, pro, uh, with our Project SAFE group. Is, if, if you aren't familiar with Project SAFE, this is important, so pay attention. Um, it's a public safety organization, 501c3, that works very closely with the police department. They do receive some government funding, but uh, they will come out to your residence and do a free assessment of your property. Um, they also uh, help organize neighborhood watch groups and merchant watch groups. Merchants, merchant watch groups do improve public safety. Okay, they work very closely with the police department, and getting those merchants to get together, or even property owners, is super important. So if you have any influence on your property owners, um, on your merchants, to get involved in a merchant's group, uh, through, and Neighborhood Watch does it for free, they'll come out, they'll organize the meeting, they'll your supply a, a location, and if you can get that done, I'll bring the refreshments. I can do that. Yeah. Oh, we had a quick question there. But, but I, I just want to interject here. You just mentioned SAFE, and I reached out to SAFE. I, when I lived in the city, I lived in uh, Hayes Valley, and I became a neighborhood watch captain. <coughs> um, and it's a great organization. This Thursday, September 16th, at the uh, Intercontinental over on uh, Howard Street, there is a fundraiser for both SAFE and the uh, SFPD. It's $175 a ticket, but it would be a great way. You can go there for like after the dinner, and it's only $50, and then they give you $50 for a casino like type thing. So maybe you can win your money back. Mm -hmm. But it'd be a great way for you to meet um, some of the other police and the, um, what do you call it, members of SAFE. Yeah. So it's on the 16th. I think it starts about 5 o'clock at 1. Yeah, that's right. Good point. I think you there. Just so I've told the police department. But I'm actually a 29-year block captain with San Francisco State. And I've been fighting crime down here for almost 34 years total. But so I'm a strong advocate of state. And they will train you to be a block captain and help run your, uh, and help set up your community watch group. So they are very good at that. One thing I did want to bring up is with uh, merchants and property developers, and property owners and condo owners and just general residents and, and other people. If you can put pressure on the district attorney and the court system to put the people behind bars that the police do arrest, it would make a big difference. Most of the people you see on the streets of our neighborhood selling drugs have 20 to 30 arrests and 20 to 30 probations because we just don't put them in jail in the city. We give them probation. So we need to get the district attorney on the court. We need to get the courts on the court. Because the police can only do so much. And um, with the with the uh, loitering laws the way are in this city, 
Um, they only, all they can do is move the crowd around. They can't do anything else about it. They can just move it. So we need to get pressure on the people who can really make the difference, which are above the police department and law enforcement. Thank you. And another thing that I found um, um, very good, because I like my street. I love Liberty Tenderloin. Um, and I like my, my block between Taylor and Jones. And one thing that I noticed uh, that they don't smoke crack as much in that block. But down there in that first block, you know, and uh, you just have to be very attentive. And, uh, you know, and um, make sure that that doesn't happen. I'm not saying on my block nothing goes on, but I'm just saying it's not as bad as some other blocks now. Like Left Fork Daddy, where I live? Yeah, I'm, I'm really beginning to notice that it's not as bad as some other blocks. Yeah. Well, with enforcement alone, I mean, the talk about the displacement. Did I answer both your questions, ma'am? I, I hope that I did. Yeah. Did I also answer both of them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the edges of the police district are, you know, probably always going to have a little bit of exposure. Well, you um, mentioned, I'm, you mentioned I'm, how, what are my plans to, you know, I guess something about increasing the patrols or making it easier or better. Um, I, I don't see that they have a problem. The, the, the police officers take their patrol up to Gary and then they take a right turn. And if they see somebody, you know, up on post, well, they'll continue to the post, <laughs> up to post. Uh, that, that's, I've already seen that. They, they don't just stop. And then we have beats that are walking. 90% uh, of the officers at Tenderwood Station are bicycle trained. Thanks to Commander Gary, that was one of his strategic plans in coming in, is to get as many people trained in, uh, in, in the bicycle, uh, riding, <coughs> riding, doing bicycle patrol as possible. They have to go to a, how long is the class? Do you know? It's a day or two, but anyway. Oh. Yeah. Did you have a question? Um, I'm just curious. I, I noticed, I mean, I've, I've lived in this neighborhood the last 10 months. It, and to be honest with you, if I can afford to live in another neighborhood, I would. And I get sick, and I live on Leavenworth and Eddie. I live in the Hotel Verona. Mm -hmm. And so constantly when I walk out my door, I get subjected to all kinds of stuff here. Right. You know, if it's a good thing when I don't get nailed in the head by a mentally ill senior citizen. That happened to me a week and a half ago, right outside St. Anthony's, mind you. <coughs> and, or get called the name. So, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the reality of the Tenderloin is that we yeah. have the Glide Memorial, we have St. Anthony, <laughs> we have the numerous uh, mental health treatment facilities, mm -hmm. you know, um, all the nonprofits up and down, you know, up and around, and then we have the, the SROs and then the, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the parole building. Uh, I forgot the exact location of that, but, you know, the, we have some mental illness issues in Tenderloin, and we're going to run into those people. Right. I mean, so... I, Please don't. Um, please contact me at, at any time if any of my officers ever suggest that you move, because I don't think that you should move. I think that you should get mobilized. Well, I, I, I yeah. feel as a productive citizen of of this of society in general. I volunteer my time with different organizations, and um, and I'm trying to get a job to move on. I mean, I have a focus. I I feel I should be able. I'm minding my own business to be able to walk wherever I want and not bother anybody and not be subjected to be bothered by other people. I think those are reasonable expectations. Yeah, and when I got smacked by the mentally ill senior citizen, mind you, and there was like 20, 30 people that saw this whole thing, right? Um, it brought up some bad feelings of when I got attacked when I was in my early 40s. And it just did not, it, I mean, it just brought, it just brought up some disturbing stuff. I understand. Yeah. Great. So at, at this at this point, what I want to do is, uh, you guys have had some really wonderful questions for the captain. Um, it's seven it's seven o'clock. I want to kind of take a break. You guys are welcome to some food. There's some sandwiches and stuff here. Um, if the captain could stay for a few minutes and maybe talk, um, maybe follow up with that question that was in the back there. Um, and I, know, gonna, I know that intersection. It's also going to help with the door prizes. So there's more to come. There's door prizes, there's food, and there's, a, there's a, actually another meeting following this, uh, which the agenda's not out yet for. So this is uh, one of those verified meetings. Uh, yeah.